Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Welcome to First Christian Church, Fort Smith, on this most holy night. You know, I always love this service for, for a lot of reasons. Our Christmas traditions, the beauty of the decorated sanctuary, the candlelights and the darkness, the holiday message, the familiar Christmas carols, the anticipation of Christmas Day, and one of the things I enjoy the most is seeing all the families together, especially uh, some of you maybe who grew up in the church but don't get to come all the time, and, and it's nice to have you back here. 
And for, for all of you, remember you always have a home here. This is your home. And we will always be your church family. And welcome back. And from those of you who are visiting us uh, in person or checking out our service online, uh, perhaps you will consider joining this family of faith so that you can call this your home at some point as well. In any event, whether this is your first visit to our service or if you're here every week, we pray that you'll find this Christmas Eve service spiritually uplifting. We are an open and affirming church, welcoming everyone, no exceptions. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, you notice the church is decorated. We have the poinsettias. Uh, if you purchased one of those poinsettias, uh, remember you can take that home with you after the service tonight. Uh, and the, uh, the um, worship ministry is going to be meeting here at 11 o'clock on Tuesday morning to clean up the rest of the uh, decorations for the year. If anybody would like to join us, you're certainly welcome for that. Now, each time uh, this time of year, we set aside a little time to recall the Christmas story. In Luke's gospel, we are told that Joseph and Mary made the trek to Joseph's ancestral home, Bethlehem, for a census. Finding no room in the inn, Mary gave birth to Jesus, God's only begotten son, in a lowly shelter. She wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger to rest. We are told that the angels heralded his birth by appearing to some shepherds in the field who were watching their flocks by night, meeting them with a great heavenly host and asking them to seek out Jesus and proclaiming his glory. In Matthew's gospel, we're told another story of Christ's birth where wise men from the east follow a star to Jesus and give him expensive royal gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, recognizing him as our king. On their way, they encountered King Herod, who threatened the life of the baby Jesus, forcing his family to flee to Egypt for a time. And Dr. Robinson will be uh, expounding upon that a little bit later on in the, uh, in the sermon today. In John's Gospel, we see that Jesus Christ is a part of God, pre-existing creation. He was sent to us to be the Savior of the world. So from a lowly birth in a manger and threatened in early life, Jesus grew to become the Christ, the anointed one of God, our teacher, redeemer, and king. And we come to this service worshiping him. And we come to this sacred place on this holy Christmas Eve surrounded by the symbols of the season. Evergreens, representing the eternal life that we have through Jesus Christ. The tree decorated with chrismons, each of which is a symbol pointing to uh, a portion of Jesus' life and reminding of something, of some, something about them. The white vestments pointing to the purity of the Christ child. The red poinsettias reminding us of the blood Jesus shed for our sins. And now the lighting of the Advent wreath. We light the candle of hope, praying that every person receives sustaining hope in their hour of greatest need. We light the candle of peace, asking for God's peace that passes understanding to alight on the hearts of all humankind, ending strife and war. We light the candle of joy, singing our praises to God in response to our many blessings, recognizing that we have been most privileged and blessed. We light the candle of love, remembering that God's greatest commandments are to love him and our neighbors. And We light the candle for Jesus Christ, the light of the world. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, was with God, and the Word was God. What has come into being with him is life, and his life is the light of all people. The Word became flesh on that Christmas day so many years ago. His light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. His light enlightens each of us. His divine spark burns within each of us. Never let us hide that light. Let the light of Jesus Christ shine through each of us as we bear witness to him through our actions every day. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for sharing your only begotten Son with us on that Christmas day so many years ago. Help us to reach out to those in need, giving them hope to make it through another day. Help us to be the peacemakers, bringing your peace to the world. 
Help us to always remember to keep our focus on the many joys that we have in life and help us to love others as you have loved us. Let the light of your Son, Jesus, shine through each of us. It is in his name we pray. Amen. You know, as a little girl around the Christmas tree in my, my home family, we'd all gather around the piano. I'm a musical family, so my, my, um, my grandmother was the organist, and we'd always take a time to, to gather around and to sing some of our favorite Christmas hymns. And I would like to, you to uh, have that joy also, because I know we do that. We've been doing this for a long time. So we're going to sing just the first verses. I know it's dark tonight, but we can do the first verses of some hymns, Christmas hymns. I know you know them, so come and help me, okay? The first one is, O Come, All Ye Faithful, and Mary Beth will get us started, okay? Angels we have heard on high. the herald angels sing. See 
the first Noel. joy to the world. Thank you, bell choir. Thank you, worship leaders. And thank you for being here tonight to help us celebrate the most amazing event in the history of the world. We ask now that if you would please stand with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we come on this holy, sacred occasion. We come, we have met at your house to praise you for sending your son, Jesus. He came as one of us, born in a stable, wrapped in rags, slept on a wooden bed called a manger. He dwelt among us for 33 years without sin and willingly marched to an old rugged cross where he offered his life for our life. He traded his innocence and perfection for our sins and imperfections. Thank you that he overcame death, hell, and the grave. We stand in the knowledge that someday, but we don't know when, he will be on his way back. This service is a tribute to celebrate him. We gather 
celebrate the greatest, most mysterious event in the universe, the mystery of why. Why you loved us so much that you gave your only son that whoever believes in him will not experience spiritual death, but have everlasting life. We pray that every soul present here tonight will not leave the same way they came. If they came with despair, let them leave with hope. If they came with fear, let them leave with the blessed assurance and the peace that you have control over every situation present in their lives. If anyone here came without Jesus, please send them home with him in their heart. We pray this prayer in the name of your son Jesus who taught us that when we pray, say, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our gospel reading this evening... <laughs> And our reflection are going to focus on Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, New Revised Standard Version. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for it was written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Ju Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may go come and worship him. And when they had heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. And they fell down and worshiped him. Then opening their treasure, they offered him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the word of God for the people of God. Sweet little Jesus boy, 
that made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child didn't know who you was. Didn't know you come to save us, Lord, to take our sins away. Our eyes was blind. We couldn't see. We didn't know who you was. Long time ago, you was born, born in a manger low, my sweet little Jesus boy. The world treat you mean, Lord, they treat me mean too. But please, he said, that's how things is down here. We didn't know it was you. You done told us how. We is trying, Master, you done told us how. Even when you's dying, just seems like we can't do right. Look how we treated you. But please, sir, forgive us, Lord. We didn't know it was you. Thank you, Walter A. Hart. Looking for the king. The story of Christmas and coming of the Lord would not be complete without the enormous spiritual contributions of the wise men in the Gospel of Matthew. Even as a newborn baby, Jesus, the Son of God, attracted the attention of scholars many hundreds of miles away from the place where he was born. When Christ was born, the entire cosmic universe was aware that something major 
something significant, something historical was taking place in the little town of Bethlehem. Matthew reveals that when Christ was born, the stars in the solar system reacted to his arrival. So much so that there's a famous star that appeared that night that he was born, the star of Bethlehem. When Jesus came into the world, even the sun, the moon, and the stars realized that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords had been born. And 33 years later, when Jesus died on an old rugged cross, the solar system reacted again when the sun refused to shine at noon, according to Luke in his 23rd chapter. And according to legend, some even say the moon ran down in blood. Matthew tells us that there were wise men from the east who came to find him. Wise men, so-called because of their scholarship in science and astrology. Evidently, these wise men were acquainted with the ways and customs of various religious and ethnic groups of their day, and especially those of the Jews. These wise men knew that the sudden appearance of a new and brilliant star in the heavens somewhere over Israel marked the birth of a new king according to Jewish beliefs. And when the Messiah, the promised one, would be born, the Messiah would be ushered in by the appearance of the brightest and most brilliant star that anyone had ever seen. And so it was, these wise men made their way to Jerusalem where they had followed the star. Now understand, this did not happen on the same night that Jesus was born. It took them several months to arrive at the place of his birth. But when they did arrive and met Herod at the king's palace, and they came asking, where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star. We have come to pay our respects. We have come to worship him. We are looking for the king, almost as if to say, we know that this baby is special. We know that this is no ordinary infant. We know that he has not only come to be king of the Jews, but king of the world. Where is he? Where is the king? Personally, I'm fascinated by every aspect of the life of Jesus, but especially his birth and his death. Christmas is about God and his love for us. And Easter is about him dying for us to prove his love. There are no wasted passages, no wasted or insignificant events in the entire Bible, and especially in the life of Jesus, and in the Christmas story that focuses on the birth of God into the world. And Easter is about the death and resurrection of Jesus, and how his love for us would not allow him to stay in the grave, but rose up for us on the third day Sunday morning. But only in Matthew do we have any mention of these wise men. 
also called magi, which is another word for magicians. Most historians believe that there were three of these men, but regardless of how many of them or who they were, they left the security, they left the safety of their own country and their own home to travel many hundreds of miles away looking for the king. Where is the king? They asked. That's the Christmas question. Allow me to tell us that Christian is more, Christmas is more than gifts and presents. Christmas is more than good food and fellowship and time off from our jobs. Christmas is even more than us spending time with our families and friends and loved ones, even though those things are important, and we should do them. Christmas is about wise men, wise women, wise boys, wise girls, who are looking for the king. If we miss the king, then we miss the true meaning of Christmas. And if we miss the king, we miss God. We miss the love of God and what the love of God is all about. And if we miss finding his son, then, beloved, we miss the reason for the season. And the reason for the season is Jesus Christ. Christmas is about returning to our spiritual roots and standing on the foundation of our Christian faith. Christmas is about the king of the universe reaching out to us and drawing us to his love. Christmas is about looking for the king. And my question for you this evening, have you found him? Have you had an encounter with the king? But more importantly, after we have found him, we soon realize that in reality, it is he who finds us. Once we have had a genuine encounter with the Son of God, we too will be just like those wise men. For if we read down to verse 12, it says, they came, they saw, they presented their gifts, they left and they went back home, but they went back a different way. Have you seen him? And if you have, then you will never leave his presence the same way you came. That is what this service and all Christian services should result in. Us coming, us seeking, us finding, and not leaving the same way we came. For we have found the king, and he has found us. We now come to the part of our service that's the central part of every service here, and that is the, the uh, Holy Communion. As glorious as the birth of Jesus is, it pales in comparison to what he accomplished as an adult. Uh, he was able to teach his disciples a new way. Through scripture and tradition passed down through the ages, we've come to know him as the Christ, our teacher and our redeemer. As we remember his birth, we also remember his death and resurrection, and we were celebrate his last supper as this holy sacrament. As disciples of Christ, we practice open communion as a central part of every worship service. This table is God's table. It is open to everyone. And we hope that through this holy meal, we can each somehow come to a connection with the divine. 
a uh, couple of housekeeping things. As we come to the table in a minute, we'll come down through the outer aisles, come and take the bread and the cup, and then in, return back to our seats through the center aisles. As you go back to your seats, there will be someone there to hand you a candle for the uh, candlelight portion of the service near the end of the service. So be sure that you uh, get a candle on the way back. If you can't uh, easily come to the table and you'd like someone to serve you where you are, just uh, raise your hand and we'll make sure that someone uh, can bring communion to you. Let us pray. God our Father, on this holy Christmas Eve, like the wise men, we seek you still. Prepare our hearts and minds to receive your Holy Spirit through this sacramental meal. Create in us a clean heart, forgive our sins, and refresh and renew us for becoming your body in the world today. Let us always approach Christmas and every day with the awe and excitement of a child. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and said, this is my body that is broken for you. In a like manner, he took the cup. And after supper, he poured out the wine and he said, this is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we now remember Jesus as we come to the table. The table is prepared.
Let us stand. Father, we have come tonight looking for the King. We have met him, we have encountered him, we've seen him, we've felt him. And now we go our way. Not the same way we came, but we go a different way, more inspired, more filled with hope and love and joy, for that is what the reason for the season is all about. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and, without, and with great joy to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore let us say Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Go in peace and Merry Christmas to you all. God bless you.